You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building, Garen James. Did I say that right or Jaren? It's Garen. It's Garen yes, James. Sir. Welcome. Thank you. Well, you know why you're here. I hope so. Charlemagne wants to be an elite cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a married man, sir. Okay, we, we can get you high have dollar married for elite cowboys. We can, we can get high dollar for you, sir. I'm, I'm just letting you know now. Yeah, Selling I think this a... piece of train has got some market value. <laughs> you can give me some high dollar. I now, how can so. somebody be an elite cowboy? Now, explain to people what elite cowboy is and how can they be an elite cowboy. Okay, so I own the largest male escort agency for women. Mm -hmm. We're a male escort agency that provides services for women. Mm -hmm. Um, you've seen it on Gigolos on Showtime. You've seen us on the Gigolo show. Uh, I've personally been on Dr. Phil, 2020, Nightline News. So, um, Tyra. Tyra Banks. Mm -hmm. um, so, basically, we provide services for women to go out on events, weddings, is it just cruises. Dates or is it sex? Because we need love too. So, you know, sometimes it is like an equality thing, right? There's a lot of yes. these services for men who are looking for women, but there was a lack of services for women who were looking for men. I hear way it. more about women who be having these guys than um men buying women. Because when men buy women, they, they it's, it's a kind of dirty. Buying yeah. a but woman. Them, it's like prostitutes, you know what I mean? Right. Like it, it's like a nasty fantasy. seedy thing. When women do it, it's for comfort and cuddling and care. Sometimes and sometimes not. Is, is it for right? sex? Is there sex involved? Yes. Well, uh, you know, in the United States, sex to sell sex is illegal. Even in so, Vegas? In Las Vegas, it's illegal. There's certain really small counties in um, Nevada. in Nevada where there's like brothel type situations, but um, most of the United States, it's illegal to sell sex. So, but the men can choose to have sex if they want. Well, we only sell the men's time and companionship. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's illegal to contract for anything more than that. So, you know, our services are basically for upscale women that are going to events, weddings. Uh, we do sell, have people going on long trips, things like that. So, like, let's say a woman wanted to go out of the country. You just had a woman call. She wanted to go on a dive trip. She lost her husband, who they used to go on dive trips every year. And she wanted to go to a foreign country to go on a 10-day dive trip, but didn't want to go alone. What's a dive trip? Diving. Scuba diving, scuba man. Diving. Oh, scuba diving. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking about sex. So, I was like, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's mm -hmm. this place in Thailand where you go and they... No. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was with you. I was like, really? uh, so you know, this woman who wanted to do what she used to do with her husband and couldn't do it anymore, and was afraid to go alone, and hired one of our guys who was former military to sort of like be a bodyguard and and uh, a boyfriend for the trip and to protect her and make sure she had a good time. So you know, these are the types of services that I provide. Did they stay in the same room? Yes. Yeah. How do you vet the guys out to make sure that they're actually because you know what if they go and she's yeah. moody and she's got an attitude oh, and right. now he's still got to mm -hmm. be this nice great guy because that's what he's getting paid for really. Yeah. I mean, you know, this job is part of my job is to find the type of guys that would be good. And you know, it's crazy you would think that with good looking guys, it's really hard to find a guy without an ego. Mm -hmm. And that's really important is to not really have this really big ego. Um, if I've had guys call me that are telling me how many women they've slept with and they're, you know, the greatest gift to, to you know, to women that's ever existed. And this type of person is not going to be good at this job. You have to remember that people are paying you to sort of worship them. Mm. So if you have this really big ego and you have like this, you know, thing where you're the greatest thing on earth then it's going to be really hard to to you know dote on somebody and worship them and you're, you're like oh no baby you need to worship me but no they're paying you to to make it the other way around. So how much do you charge I, uh, what, what is the fee a, a lot depends. of the guys have different rates and we do different things we do hourlies weeklies we Weekend have leaves. week weekends <laughs> so what's the hourly rate uh, let's say normally like a starting rate would be a two hour appointment for six fifty. So Amber, okay. you probably yeah. get about a hundred dollars for nah, two I, hours. Shut up. <laughs> no, shut up. no, I, I could we could work out something where it's like a package. No, you're not deal. selling me. No, I want to work out. No. <laughs> you know, because then you know you could like you know spin them some music or yeah. like oh, take them backstage at a concert. He loves the role play too. He actually likes the role play as a cowboy. He told yeah, us that one could, time. Really? No, as a cowboy one time. I we was. could the yeah. beige ranger. We'll just have to talk to your wife, and maybe she'll get like a you know pair of shoes out of the deal here and there, and nah, maybe she you know some it. action. No, she has. Yeah, you could just take her backstage and make her feel special. Now, Garen, I'm gonna assume yep. that you know a lot 
about what it takes to make a woman feel special because a lot of guys out here, right. like you said, they have egos and sometimes right. they're not catering to a woman. So if you could give these guys some advice, because okay. I'm sure a lot of guys can come to you also and be like, look, or women, yeah. my relationship is not going so well. We're not see- we're not communicating. My man's not making me feel special. What advice would you give to men as far as making a woman feel special? Okay, so here's like the number one complaint that I hear. And, you know, Time Magazine did a story on this in 2011 stating that m- women who are college educated are now in, in making as much money per me- um, um, per capita as men. So mm-hmm. they're making just as much money as men. Now, you have this thing where men think like back in the 60s and 70s where it's like, hey, baby, I'm going to ask you out. We're going to do what, what I want to do. You know, I'm paying. You know, I'm in control. I'm the man. And you have this problem now where women are on an equal status level and they're making just as much money. And or it's more. like, it's like, it's, or more mm-hmm. for sure. And it's like, no, you're, you're no longer the man. You're no longer, you know, wearing the britches in this relationship. And, uh, you know, that's one of the biggest complaints is that these men are still living in this, this time period where they think that, you know, they're the man, they're the breadwinner, they make the decisions. Mm-hmm. So that's a big big thing that I'm finding and you know the crazy thing is is like with our service women are are more used to men than using at, at using services mm-hmm. meaning the higher income level that you go right. you're going to have an eyelash person mm-hmm. you're going to have an eyebrow person maybe <laughs> you're going to have a makeup artist you're going to have your hair person you're going to have a dog walker you're going to have a personal shopper they come to you yes and, you and so like it's an easy transition for women to have a a, a boyfriend service too what's, so, what's the majority of women is it um, white is it black is it asian is it overweight like what's the majority uh, of women that call you know what's crazy is that this isn't a casting so i've never once asked an, a client for a photo no. Mm. So never. I, I've never once asked a woman her age. You know, and a guy that's working for me or a new guy that works for me is like, hey, am I going to get a photo or know the woman's age? It's like, that's a warning sign. No, no, no. It's not about that. Who cares? What Who cares it? what her photo is? Who cares? Mm. You know, we're here to make every woman happy no matter what. So, you know, we don't do that. Have you ever sold your dick? Well. He's like, no, I still have it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, when I first started, <laughs> when I first started the agency, I went out on a lot of appointments. But now I'm married to a uh, Latin woman. I don't know if you ever had experience with a Latin woman, but yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. She well, and in, in, in to top it off, she's Colombian. So oh, she'll cut you. She, yeah. So <laughs> now you know. Now it's like you know, I, I'm a bit afraid. You know, to even when I'm on the phone flirting with the clients. Hey, how are you, honey? And I look over and I see her with that look. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you meet her through the service? No, oh. no, no. We met uh, elsewhere. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I'm happily married and uh, I have three year old twins. So basically, I, you know, I've been, I just run the agency now. You got daughters? I got a boy and a girl, yeah. Wow. So yeah. what do you tell twin, the girl twin. about this service when she gets older? <sighs> That's a good question. You know, she's, they're, they're three now. And it's so funny. She'll, she more than him mocks me. Like, um, like I'll say, I got to go to the office and make appointments. I got to go, you know, I'm, I'm scheduling appointments. And she walks around with a little notepad now, says she's Making she's doing appointments. Doing appointments. <laughs> appointments. <Hilarious. laughs> so, but you know what I would like to do is the same thing that I do as, uh, as I share with my mother. You know, I've had women uh, send me emails where um, they were dying of cancer and it was a bucket list to go to India before they died mm-hmm. on a trip with, with somebody that made them feel special. And get an email from that person who's no longer here. You know, this is what I would share with my daughter. I would share with my daughter all the women that I've helped through divorce. See, a lot of people don't realize that when you're going through a divorce, you're in a battle with somebody. And the more money that you have can last two years, three years. I've seen somebody going through a three-year battle with these fighting these assets. Now, can you imagine you're in a battle with this other person that's trying to take everything from you? How are you going to start a new relationship with somebody else? So a lot of the women that I deal with are going through a divorce. Mm. It's like, I need some me time. I need to go away for a weekend. I need to do this, but I can't like start some new relationship and have this this wreckage with me. So I just need some companionship. Need somebody to get the me through The best way this. to get over somebody is to get up onto somebody else. I, that's what they. That's you, what they you any say. horror stories about dudes that you hired that were just totally bad and just horrible, <laughs> just made a bad decision? You know, I kind of weed through them. I, I, you know, we have a very lengthy uh, uh, process of hiring mm-hmm. um, 
first we get it you know if anybody's i guess listening if you want to work please don't call the phone number on the website you know we have an employment page <laughs> please do not send pictures of your privates it says there strictly we don't need those pictures but don't um, you know have you, you ever could, had a woman complain about a man's dick size no. he's not selling sex he's not thing. selling it's sex Charlemagne. Oh. if you guys want to send pics you can send those to charlamagne <laughs> uh, she used to have a dick pic uh email <laughs> yeah it's, email. Um, it's a pretty dick swag at gmail <laughs> If you want to send those, I'll uh, bet it out for you. Yeah, yeah. You guys can send all those pictures there. <laughs> but no, we have an employment page. Uh, <laughs> we only work with guys with professional photos. That's a that's a big question. Is like, okay, this is like having professional photos is like having kind of like a college education in the corporate world. You can't have non-professional photos and be selling yourself as a product. So these guys that send me pictures and it's like them in the bathroom and there's Absolutely. toothpaste on right. the mirror. A selfie. And sh you know, so like, <laughs> you know, you got to get with it. Like, think of a, open up a magazine and you see a picture of a purse. It's this beautiful picture spent with this mm -hmm. beautiful, you know, it's a product. So you're a product. So you have to have professional photos if you want to work as a male escort. And you get everything, every size. You get chubby men, skinny men. Yeah, well, women men. do have fetishes, Garen. So Nassau. there's some women who like. Well, we might start a bargain basement page off the <laughs> oh site, gosh. right? <laughs> do some bargain basements. No. <laughs> no. Because you said being in shape is important discount. in order for people. Yeah. Yeah. No, we do have if you're all ugly, sorts you ugly, you get a discount. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I discounted price today? <laughs> <laughs> we do, no, but we do have a lot of different types of people because there, I don't think there's any cookie cutter of what women like. And, right. you know, we have t taller guys, but we do, you know, we, we, we try to make sure that they're physically appealing. Gotcha. But, but, you know, what the crazy thing is, is physically appealing gets you nowhere. Right. It, you know, a lot of this business is people rescheduling and rescheduling the same person. So you could be a good looking guy. And like, not be charming, not be funny, not be cute, not be, not be savvy, and not be smart. And then that two-hour appointment's mm -hmm. not going to get extended. You're not going to get booked on a weekend. You're not going to get, you know, these other bookings. So, oh, it really, the looks just now, get you in the door. When do you tell some of these people they got to retire? You know what's crazy? Ageism is, that, is real. No, but you know what's crazy is that when I first started the agency back ten years ago, I was like twenty-one-year-old guys, hot little guys, you know. And now I've realized over the years that women are calling me, do you have a guy in their 60s? You know, yeah, I'm a like little bit older. older. I don't want like some 20 year old. So now like my ages are, you know, I try to find guys starting at 35 and I have guys that are 45. It's some of my best working men, they're 45. Wow. I had a question yeah. now. How do you stop men from, let's say you go on, a, let's say we use Charlamagne. Let's yeah. say Charlamagne goes Don't on use a me, I'm yeah, married. let's use him. Let's say Charlamagne goes on a date. And, <laughs> no, and him and Charlamagne girl, won't go on a date. And him and the girl <laughs> connect. Yes. Who's to stop? Charlamagne can just tell a girl, you know what? You don't have to go through the agency anymore. Sure. Like, you won't get go paid. through me directly. Sure. You know, because now he gets paid directly. Mm -hmm. That way he cuts you out. Has that happened? Well, you know, here's the thing. If the woman is doing this service, she knows what she's getting into. She's not really looking for that anyway. Gotcha. So, you know, she wants it to be, you know, cut and dry, not having to flirt with the guy and text the guy and you know maintain this relationship it's not match.com that's the beauty gotcha. of this oh, christian mingle right right that's mm -hmm. the beauty of this it's like you can text garen call garen and set up an appointment and that's it it's like there's no maintenance to this relationship gotcha. at all there's no flirting no texting so most of the women that are going into this is because that's what they want you know, they don't want to do all that stuff. What if a man yeah. calls and wants to make an appointment? Yeah, if Charlemagne wants a guy. Like, Charlemagne's getting... What? Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a married man. I don't know why you no, keep doing that. Uh, now, Charlemagne's getting something put up his butt later on today now. I'm getting a colonic. To... Oh. Another one. I, yeah, I've not yet to do that. Oh, so you should know. do it. Yeah? It's enjoyable. Okay. Well, should we talk it's about enjoyable. that now as, you're, as we're sending you out an appointment? <laughs> I'm not going to an appointment. I'm so, married. If, if, so, if a guy, so, like you said, if a guy calls and asks for a guy, um, you know, at this time, we don't represent any men that see men. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the things about our agencies that is different. When I first started the agency, you know, women would call and say, are you sure he's, you know, he's not gay? Is he seeing other men? So I think, you know, women are kind of turned off by that in the sense that they're paying someone. So they already feel in the back of their mind like, oh, he's faking liking me. Okay. So then imagine if he was also gay. Then it's like, oh, my God, Ugh. he's double faking yeah. you know He's so definitely not interested so we've always you know been under the mind frame that we represent straight men for women only gotcha. um because they're buying into a dream you're selling correct. them a dream so correct. it's harder yeah. to dream if you know that the guy's gay how much, and, how yeah. much did the show gigolos help 
Well, the Gigolo show is really, really interesting and, and crazy at the same time. You know, I was on the doctor, I mean, I was on Tyra Banks, and I got a call from from a producer on the Gigolo show, and I was like, they were like, yeah, we're going to have this dirty show on late night showtime, and people are going to be having sex, and it's going to be dirty and crazy. And I was like, oh, my God, I don't want to get involved in that at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and they wanted me to be on the show, and I said, listen, I'll give you some guys on the show as you know, as I didn't really know much about what's going on. Sexy I was just, decoys. Yeah. Yeah. So, but then we started filming the show and it was really, it was really fun. And so I got involved more and, and I was a creative consultant from the beginning. And, you know, the show was like. Because they were definitely having sex on that yeah, show. Yeah. You know, but they're, you know, the producers are paying the men and, and Showtime is, or the producers have talked about it. Um, you know, Jay from Relativity Real, who's a producer on the show, he's you know, came out and said, listen, we're paying the men and we're paying the women so we can film what we want to film. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, you know, but as a creative consultant for the show, I'd be like, okay, listen, I have this woman. She's in a wheelchair. She's never been on a special date. Like, why don't we have a couple of the guys do like a pro bono and we take her to the circus and we make her feel special and it'd be such an amazing episode. It's going to be amazing. And they would be like, is she going to show her boobs? I'm like, <laughs> dude, she's, you know, she's in the wheelchair. And they're like, yeah, but she could still, you know, pop her shirt off oh and, you God. know, we'll have a wheelchair boobs. And, that you know, and it'd be like, yeah, that'd be great. You got that'd TV to sell, baby. Yeah, that'd sell. And I was like, all right, never, never mind. So, you know, I just, at that point, mm-hmm. I learned you just have to flow with it. And gotcha. it was like, let's get crazy. Because there were some dirty. episodes, I remember one in particular where one of the gigolos, um, he was hired because a man wanted to watch his wife have sex with him. Right. That one in particular. It was a black couple too, by the way. Yeah. And he, yes, he yeah, hired. I, um, I remember. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. And uh-huh. there was one where a woman, every time she had sex, it was painful for her. So she hired him to, I guess, um, do other things yeah. in a way. Eat the box. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> if you guys hired a... a some, what, like, would you guys ever do that? Watch your wife have sex with somebody else? Or? No, absolutely not. <laughs> not even. Well, you know what's crazy is in Las Vegas, we get a lot of calls um, for from couples. Meaning, like, you have, let's say, you have like a really high end client, or mm-hmm. you know, they're going to Las Vegas. They're at the win. They're at the encore, and they, uh, you know, the guy's a gambler. He wants to go gamble, and the wife just stands around. And but she'd rather go to Celine Dion, and he's seen Celine Dion with her once, and that's the only you know. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "I'm gonna go gamble. Why don't we have somebody take you to Celine Dion, honey? Wouldn't that be amazing?" And They'll that's a lot somebody. that happens. Is is uh, a guys oh. go there to gamble, and they have somebody take their wife out and entertain them. A lot okay. of a lot yeah. of white clientele, I'm sure, is partaking in that one. Celine Dion, You'd be surprised. Probably. You know, <laughs> uh, we do have, you know, we do have a lot of people of color. We do. You know we, what else? You know, do? we represent men of color. We we have mm-hmm. people of color, and uh, yeah. A, a lot of couples also stop having sex, right, at a point because I always hear I this as an issue. Like, oh, I haven't had that problem yet. You haven't had it, but I'm sure you know we people who, five kids. in their yeah, relationships, right. <laughs> have stopped having sex with each other. It happens, uh-huh. you know, yeah. uh, quite frequently. That might be another reason, perhaps. I don't know for somebody to hire uh, one of your male cowboys. Maybe. To, Does that uh, happen? Maybe just, you know, I get calls qu- uh, quite a bit too that it's like, you know, my wife is a little bit older. Mm-hmm. Um, she's dry. She's feeling, you know, not so hot anymore, not so attractive anymore, and we'll hire a guy to come kind of like uh, flirt with her at the bar. Like we don't do, we, we've never done an appointment where the wife doesn't know what's going on. Like mm-hmm. I, I have people that call and say, you know, will a guy just walk up and like ask my wife to dance? And I say, no, that's not fair to her. What if she found out? Right. But why don't you tell her you'd like to hire somebody and, you know, have him come in and flirt and dance with her and smile at her and a younger guy and make her feel special. I wonder again. what that does for the relationship though. Like for your relationship with your woman, what would that do Some people for your get turned on by it. Yeah. Mm. That's some fetish things, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, overall, you know, our our main thing is is um, you know, we don't when a woman calls and says, you know, hi, um, I can't give you my name. Um, you know, I can't put this on a credit card. Um, I'm married. <laughs> and I say, Well, you know, you're not using my service if you're gonna tell me that, you know, we're not here to, you know, Provide a service for cheaters. Right. So please don't call me and tell me that because and I'm going to tell you. You don't provide a service for cheaters? No. 
Wow. You know, I've also had people- two in morals. Yeah, I'm telling you. It's also That's what I learned some in principles da- in my life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's putting somebody in danger, too. Yeah, Absolutely. you know, and, and another thing we don't do is, uh, you know, I've had people call and they're like, I need to find out if my wife is cheating. She's going to be at this bar, you know, go hit on her trying to get her phone number. The sexy decoy. And I'm like, no, you know, like, why wouldn't you just hire, you know, spend the money and hire a relationship therapist? Like, or why? Are, I've said that to like 50 people in my life. Wow. Mm-hmm. So- you know, we're we're not we're not here for for that type of thing. You know, we're not here for cheaters. We're not here to find out if your wife's cheating. I said, oh, please don't call me. <laughs> well, the people want to hire your guys. We're here to spread joy. How, how can they get to you? Uh, we have a website, Cowboys for Angels, um, and uh, Cowboys with the number four Angels. And uh, there you can see on the Cowboys page, we represent 100 men in about 10 different cities. Mm-hmm. If you don't see a guy in your city, uh, you we we fly people all over the place all the time. First class. Um, it's it's up to the, it's up to the client. Okay. Do you think um, Brokeback Mountain helped to hurt hurt your cowboy business? <laughs> 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 that that was that on your mind because you're getting your colonic today? <laughs> that is funny. I, I like that. Um, did it, I have no idea mm. how that even relates? But you know, um, but yeah. Can but guys go on I'm the interested. website yeah. also to but, actually apply to? Be? Yes. Yeah, we have an employment page. Um, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Garen James. Um, you know, I have updates there. I also have Instagram on Cowboys for Angels. Um, so, you know, it's it's been a great business. It's been fun. It's been a fun ride. Uh, again, 10 years doing this. So, so far. You sound like you're getting out, man. Yeah, that's what it sounded like. Yeah, man. Getting out? Getting out what? The business. The, business. Right. the way you said oh, it. Oh, like no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not going Make no. sure my boyfriend oh, okay, okay. isn't on the site. Oh, oh wait. Goodness. Uh-oh. Is what he trying he, to apply? What if I find out that my boyfriend's been? But you know, you know what's crazy is like uh, uh, the sort of celebrities that have used our service, and it's, um, you know, that's one thing is like we're a confidential service, so like I've never once name dropped. But it's just crazy because you you start this company and you start this brand, and then when you're trusted by somebody at a certain level, like I've had Forbes listers, I've had CEOs of corporations, I've had A-listers, I've had people that you've seen in movies, I've had people that you've seen on TV, I've had people that you've heard on the radio, you can find some of my my clients' books in Barnes & Noble, and like that to me is is just a true sign that I've created something mm. special and a brand that people can trust, and you know, it's just, it's been, a, it's been said, an amazing ride. But if we radio. see one of the guys on the red carpet and we see them on the site, then we'll know, right? Well, it's usually not, you know, I do have private men on the website, oh, so okay. I've sent people to events, and you'll you would never know. Has ye um, has ye ever called? You said people on the radio. Has ye ever called for an event and needed somebody? Uh, you know what? That's a that's a great question. And unfortunately, I haven't used the service. I cannot confirm me? or deny. Oh, okay, all right, all right. because. All right. Because she you know well. it's a confidential, I you, you know. I, I see our con- friend. I see our friend Nick Hawk is still available. Yeah, he's doing good. Mm-hmm. Look at you on the uh-huh. site. Yeah, like like on you here. haven't used Nick. These before, guys all yeah. look better than both of you. <laughs> all right. Well, that Garen, was not nice, <laughs> Darren. We appreciate you coming. in. Listen, I, I for for a fact, I think you know you both would do very well at this. We're business. married. Jeff, we're married. <laughs> I know. Just before if we in, got married to if each in other, fact, if in fact, you know. You guys both have amazing personalities, which is, you know, and you're both tall, handsome, good looking. He's guys. not tall. You, I would rather you said I have an amazing body. There's one that, named well, Charles yeah, that looks Jackson like Charlemagne on here. Didn't Jackson Charles? Stacks? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Garen, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It's the Breakfast Club. It's Garen James. Yeah.